bro. Holy shit. Dude, that's at least a 23. 23? Yeah. Oh, look. On the stinger hook, too. Been waiting a long time for this video. Bass fishing, the spawn, sight fishing. It's awesome. You see the fish. You can be like, that one's too small. I'm not going to mess with it. That's a big one. Let's go over there and spend a couple minutes with her. All right. So, what is this? This is the bass spawn episode of bass fishing. Or actually, let me say that again. The Bass Spawn episode of Fishing Explained 2021. We're going to talk baits, we're talking about where, and we're going to talk when. Okay, so in the world of bass fishing, a lot of people wait for these, these months, specifically this month. The full moon between March and the full moon between April, lots of magic happens, okay? Lots of personal bests are broken in this month. So I only had to pick three. I have about 10 baits. That I could easily list, but I'm gonna say if you're watching this, then more than likely you're a noob, you need some direction. So we're gonna give you three baits. Three baits, three baits, three baits. Okay, so bait number one, this is undoubtedly the best bait of all time when it comes to the spawn. I don't care what any bass fisherman says. This is the best bait during the spawn ever created, okay? Well, if they're not sponsored by them, they probably won't tell you, but it is a worm, okay? It is a worm. Wacky rigged, meaning that there's a hook going through the middle of the worm. This hook just happens to be a giant two-aught hook. Okay, and also, we're not playing with little fish at this moment, okay? The reason why we have such a big hook, the reason why we have... A small worm is we're throwing this into the Ooh. beds where the fish are. So we want to throw this into the beds. To hopefully the female bites it before the That's male bites it. Uh, we got a giant hook. Like I said, this is a two aught Nico hook from VMC. It's got the little two weedless uh, mono guards on there to help you out with the weeds. And on top of that, I'm not going cheap. I'm going this is this this knot right here came off of a 20 pound fluorocarbon then which is then attached to 30 pound main line on a bait caster setup so we're targeting big fish right that's the name of the game today we are targeting the big fish there's two fish on this bed right there's the giant female and there's a little dinky buck that's there we're trying to catch the big female okay so what we're gonna do is even if the little buck catches well, this this will catch both of them but if the little buck bites on this, just throw the little buck back out the back of your kayak or boat or keep them in your live well and throw this right back to them immediately. More than likely, the female's going to smoke it. And what female does, that little six-pound female, well, guess what? You got the gear to handle if you, if you tie the right hooks and everything. Okay? So, that's the wacky ring. Wacky ring worm does more damage during this time of year than any other lore combined heck you could probably add them all together that is. all the bites together they probably still won't get as many bites as the wacky worm so the wacky worm is a technique that even if someone's fished an area and they've left and you roll up in there wacky worm can still catch them so the wacky worm is one of those lures where like if, if the guy's in front of you and he's throwing a a certain lure and when you go in you need to throw something else it doesn't matter if you throw the wacky worm, you go there. You can throw wacky worm too, because it's all like uh, I think it's kind of it kind of falls in the category of luck of the draw or whoever draws a short stick. Fish will bite. Wacky worm is one of those things. They do, the fish don't care who it is, because your retrieve doesn't really matter, because everybody throws a weight list, they throw it on the bed, and just kind of sinks down. So wacky worm, Senkos from Yamamoto's, or that one was actually a uh, Yum Dinger. 
Bass Pro Shops has their own. They're all pretty good. They're all pretty good. Uh, all different types of colors, too. For me, I like, unless if it's chocolate milk, I like to throw black. Everything else, watermelon red. Done. Okay. Sometimes I dye the, the ends chartreuse. Sometimes I don't, depending on the day. And on top of that, okay. Once again, we're trying to catch the big fish, right? So, a lot of times, in my world, the spawn also means dirty water. And when it's dirty, you know the fish are in that one to three foot zone? Well, they got the beds. And if, if there's vegetation around, you can even tell where the beds are at, based on how the fish have already cleared the vegetation out. So you'll see these little, like, crop circles inside these... Uh, Lily pad stems, or there's hydrilla, kuntel. You can, you can see them. You can see it's some grass, and there's like an orange spot. So, for those situations where you cannot see the fish, so you're just blind casting. You've already cast the the sinkhole in there, they won't touch it. You know, they, they, they already know it's a fake. They don't, or do that, or they, they don't see it as a danger thing. They let it go, they don't touch it. Well, sometimes you need to wake these bad girls up, right? So, you need to throw something loud, something, something that just gets their attention, right? So, get, we guys hear that. That's the sound. Hear that? This that stock comes out of the pack. It sounded like that. This is the booyah squeecher or squilcher, buzz bait. This is the three eighths, and I got a horny toad on the back. Okay, zoom horny toad. Once again, is that green pumpkin red type of color? What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to basically piss the bass off. For the most part, this is a big target. The little buck bass is not going to hit it. The female has to come and take care of this problem. So that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to trigger the female. And not the buck bass. Okay, so that's the main deal with this. Not gonna get a lot of bites. You're gonna get 10 oh, bites on the Cinco before you get one of these. Okay, yeah. and this is a defensive bite, it's not a hunger bite. Where the Cinco could be a hunger bite or, or defensive bite. This ain't a hunger bite, this is a defensive bite. So when they come and they smash this thing, it is a defensive bite. So, it's, like I said, this is a big target. For the most part, the two pound buck bass. Might be too busy chasing the little bluegills, right? And the female is going to be like, what the heck are you doing, man? You got to go take care of this problem. Must I do everything myself? That's what you got. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. So, but the thing about the buzz bait is it's either you got to have real, real muddy waters or the conditions must be right. When the conditions are right, what I mean is overcast and a slight chop on the water. Like five miles per hour is perfect. 10 is still okay, but once you go over that, it's a little crazy, but this is what you want. I don't have a trailer hook on this too, but a lot of times, the when the bait when the bait comes flying through the uh, bed, a lot of times they don't buy it. They'll just bump it. They'll just bump it. They'll just bump it. They'll just bump it, right? Bump it. We'll put a trailer hook on there, but instead of facing up, you want to face it down. So when they bump it, they still get hooked. Technically, that's not bed fishing. So if you hook a fish outside the mouth like that you can put them in the live well you can take them away in because it's not sight fishing okay so that's not against the rules to do that got that tip from mr jason christie himself thank you very much sir then on top of that if you see them if you see them waking after say bluegills but they won't bite anything well shoot feed them a bluegill look at that look at that feed them that bluegill doesn't that look good i mean that's the that is the sixth sense swim jig with the skirt trimmed up quite a bit. Okay, so that's the skirt. It's all trimmed up. Let me hold it again. It's all trimmed up real nice. And the body, that's a Kitek electric bluegill color. So what, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to trick the fish. We're not even trick them. And they're already looking to chase off bluegills from the bed. So you, what do you do? You give them bluegill. Okay. And this gets smoked so often during the uh, spawn. A lot of people are not talking about this. A lot of pros will not tell you about this. But instead of like throwing the baits in the bed and waiting, you throw this and it will come to you. Okay, so that's the power of this. So that's why it's in the top three. Swim jig, bluegill pattern, 
The white Slim one works good now. too, but it seems like if the fish is already looking yeah. at bluegills, just give them bluegill, you know? Don't make it complicated. Give them bluegill. Caught lots of fish. Hopefully, by now, you've already seen all the footage of me catching fish from all three of these. And when and where, okay? So, where do bass spawn at? Bass will spawn on an area that has no current. For the guys that are in the rivers, you have to get away from current. Somehow you got to get away from current. If the river goes up and down, well, it's going to be at the lowest area that the water can flow down to and plus three feet. That's where they're going to spawn at, okay? That's the water level. Uh, some rivers, they won't spawn until the river is consistent. Okay, so keep that in mind. That river might spawn in June. I don't know. Just saying. But if you're a lake guy, more than likely, it's in the pockets. Pockets, pockets, or flats. That's it. One to three foot of water. One to three foot of water is where I'm at. If you're in a clear lake, it's not unusual to have them three to ten, especially smallmouth. Smallmouth will spawn a little deeper than the largemouth. Smallmouths tend to spawn more towards the main lake than towards the back of the pockets. But once again, they got to have non-running water. The water must be very stable, okay? So that's the main difference between the smallmouth and largemouth from my experience. So once you find bedfish, when do they bite? They bite 24-7. 24-7. So a lot of times when my brother and I go fishing, he wants to go out super early to catch the morning bite. For me, I, I say it doesn't matter. If he's there, he's on the bed or close to the bed, he'll bite it 24-7. doesn't matter when you show up. He'll bite it all day. Throw one of these. You know, he'll, you'll know, catch him. Or come back in an hour and throw it again. He'll catch him. The buzz bait is more of a piss him off bait. And well, actually, these two are more like pissing them off baits. So if you know there's a bed over there, before you get over there, just make 10 casts over that bed. And he'll smoke it. If he doesn't, well, if he could reach you with a whack worm, throw that up there. Jig it three, four times. Keep throwing it, keep throwing it. He'll eventually bite it. But if you see him chasing stuff already, the swim jig is the number one bait. I don't like throwing it much, but I know it works. So, swim jig all day. All right? So, this is the three baits. Now, there are some advanced things on how to work them, what to look for. Once, and there's also other debates as well, okay? So that's all in our Patreon. Uh, we That's going to be our very first series of Patreon. Is we'll show you how to catch bedding fish, especially if you can see them. And also we're going to release a whole bunch of other type of uh, secret footage on where and how we're catching all these big bass. So uh, keep your eye out for that. There's probably a link in the video description on how to get to Patreon. And then you'll probably get some links on uh, me teaching you how to how to work, how to work spawning, how spawning bass. And we'll, if you're a Patreon supporter, we'll answer every question you got to throw at us, okay? So that's one of the perks of being a Patreon supporter. But anyways, this is the bass spawn. Nothing, you know, make sure your gear's pretty beefed up because we're not, we're not, we're not like sugarcoating anything. So most of the times we're throwing everything on a bait caster. Most of the time there's gonna be 20 pound test. Most of the time, if it's braid, it's going to be 65 pound braid. Except the swim jig. I throw the swim jig on 30, but that's about it. Have fun because this is the month to do it. A lot of people will say, what about the Texas rig? The Texas rig is good. Don't get me wrong. But the Texas rig can be substituted by the wacky rig. Okay? So your Texas rig lizards and all of those stuff can be substituted by the wacky rig. Now, the Texas rig cannot piss a fish off like these two. They cannot piss them off. So that's why these two here, they are fun ways to catch fish. That's why they're in the top three. Oh, yeah. So if I have top five, it would be Texas rig and it would be a drop shot, right? But that's covered in the other videos, in the Patreon stuff, where we teach you how to catch spawning bass. And there's three ways to catch them. But these are the three baits. Okay? You guys get what I'm saying? Alright. So anyways, this is the Bass Spawn episode for Fishing Explain 2021. Sub to the channel if you guys want to uh, support us. If you guys want to hear more about the bass stuff. Because the next month, we're talking nothing but topwaters. Frogs. Spooks. Bigger, even buzz baits. And 
that type of stuff. That's 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 looking forward. Uh, summer months, we might talk about you know fishing, why the moon's so important during the summer month. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's for today. That's the episode for April. Spawning bass. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned something. Share it with your friends. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. All right, guys? Bye.